Hello everyone, I'm Todd Hilton from Nowhere Video Productions. In a previous video, I discussed the potential lifespan of a VHS tape. And during that video, I talked about one of the tapes that I had recorded in the summer of 1990 uh, with one of my best friends, Mr. Dan Bradley, who is no longer with us. And uh, two important things came about with that particular tape. Uh, one, the fact that it is a very important tape to me because of the footage it contains. And number two, that particular tape is uh, an example of a poor quality choice that I had made back then. It was one of the cheapest videotapes you could possibly buy back then. And now all these years later when I'm trying to capture that footage off that tape because it is precious to me, uh, the worst possible scenario happened and the tape actually snapped during the capture process. So now in this video, I'm going to show you how I do a repair on a snapped tape. Uh, this is something that I've had to do for various reasons over the years, and I've pretty much stuck to the same method. And today I'm going to show you how I do that, what you need to do it, and hopefully accomplish uh, putting that tape back in playable condition. In order to perform this surgery, you will need a few tools and supplies. Uh, first off, you will need a sharp pair of scissors. You will need a box knife or a paper knife, as long as the uh, blade is nice and sharp. Uh, one thing that I will be using in place of the scissors is actually a small paper cutter. Uh, this will be used in place of scissors and a straight edge or a ruler. Uh, that will also be used to nice, make a nice clean cut. Uh, you will need a small Phillips screwdriver. I believe this is a number zero. Uh, you want a fairly small screwdriver there. Okay, and you will also need some scotch tape. I recommend getting the matte finish tape as opposed to the, uh, the shiny finish uh, uh, because this will end up ultimately having to run through your machine. And I'll get to that here uh, after a bit here. Uh, you will need either some duct tape or Gorilla tape. You don't need very much. You actually only need a very small piece. And finally, you will need your patient. Uh, we now have all the tools and supplies you need in order to... You will actually need the uh, box knife uh, because what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut along the seam which is right down the center of the spine label. You want to do that because that's going to separate when you pop this thing open. Okay, that should do it there. All right, once you got the spline label cut, now you're ready to open this. We're gonna flip it upside down here. You got five screws on the back here. They don't have to be taken out in any particular order. All right, now that I've got all the screws out, I'm going to go ahead and set these aside just so they don't roll off my table here. All right, now you're going to need that little tiny that little tiny piece of duct tape or gorilla tape, whatever have you. I'll show you what that's for here. Just a narrow, maybe half inch piece. All right, so we're going to flip this up. Now there is a little tab on the side here that you're going to want to push down. You're going to want to hold the tape together because it can fall open on you. Push in on that little tab and you're going to flip the little door open. I'm holding it with my finger. Now I'm going to take my little piece of tape here and I'm going to tape it 
so that the flap stays open because if not, you're gonna have some problems. All right, so now set this back down and now I can very carefully pop the back off here. Now, if you've done it correctly, all of your, uh, your rollers and your uh, brakes should still be intact, all your springs. Now, we're gonna set that aside. All right. Now here's your spools. Again, this tape snapped, so these are not any longer connected like they should be. All right, so I have two spools. And you can see the point in which the tape snapped. For a second, I thought it looked like I had previously uh, repaired this tape. But as it turns out, I didn't repair this tape. That is really strange. You can see the, uh, the clear spot in the tape. It looks like scotch tape but it's not that is the actual tape stock that is bizarre so the machine basically it found a weak point and it just pulled it apart uh, due to uh, uh, running it at high speed now that means that it did the tape got stretched and in fact if i look across this tape i can see all the imperfections in the tape slight creases uh, you can see, you can almost see the little particles in it. This is just a really poor quality tape. So not only is it old, it was a cheap tape to begin with, and uh, it, it, was, it was just a poor choice. So first thing we need to do, let's move the top out of the way here. All right, I need to I need to wind the tape back onto the spool until I just have that very end piece. Do the same with the other side. Yeah, I actually heard the tape snap in the machine and then it sounded like it was free spinning. Uh, it essentially was. The, uh, when the spools came loose, they were just free spinning inside the machine. So I knew something was wrong. Well, that's, that's something that uh, once you hear it, you pretty much remember what that sounds like. All right, I'm going to take my paper cutter here. And you want to make sure you, you get a nice clean cut. It is very important to make this repair. Pull out a little bit of the tape there. And you do want to try to minimize contact with the actual tape surface. Uh, as the uh, oils in your fingers will uh, degrade the tape even further. Uh, you could wear gloves. Uh, I'm not too concerned with this particular tape because it's already in bad condition. Uh, it's really not going to get much worse and I just need it long enough to get a capture off the tape. So I'm going to pull just a tiny little bit of the tape out. I'm going to use the, uh, the guides on the, uh, on the paper cutter here to line this up. And uh, I've got about an inch hanging off the side there. All right, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to push down on this little guard to pinch the tape in there. I'm going to take the handle here. I'm going to kind of push it in as I push it down. And we're going to do one nice quick swipe. All right. Now we've got a nice clean cut. We've got a minimal piece of tape here that we've cut off. And I'm going to set that to the side. All right. So that side is done. We're going to set that off to the side. Now we grab the other one, the other spool, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to 
drape a little bit across here. I'm going to line it up with that with that guide. All right. Again, you want just minimal tape sticking out. You've got to get that nice clean cut. All right, line that up as best I can here. All right, looks like we've got that straight. Okay, there we go. All right, same thing. I'm going to push down on this, push the handle in. If you're using scissors and a uh, ruler um, or any, any other method, uh, the main point is you've got to get a straight cut in order for this to work. All right, so I'm push in and down really fast, just like that. All right, now we've got a nice clean cut to work with on both sides. We are done with the paper cutter. You can set that aside. There's our tiny little trimmed piece. Now if you do this right, unless there's more severe damage, uh, you should only lose a few seconds. Uh, especially if it's recorded in standard play. All right, now here comes the here comes the fun part, folks. All right, you're gonna take your your scotch tape here, and uh, we're gonna do the actual splice. Okay, now. The surface that we're going to splice is actually going to be the back side of the tape. Uh, I recommend using the back side because it's already going to put stress on your machine to be running this little piece of uh, scotch tape through the rollers and everything and across the heads. So uh, if you have the tape on the playing side of the tape, uh, it, it is very hard on the VCR and you don't want that. So we want to make sure that we are on the play or <laughs> we want to make sure we're on the back side of the tape. Uh, the back side won't be as shiny as the playing side, uh, just for reference there. The important thing here is Again, because this will be running through your machine, you want to make sure that it is not coming in contact with the heads in your VCR. Uh, the playing surface is the shiniest surface. That is where your recording actually is. The opposite side, it's uh, not quite as shiny. Depending on the tape stock, it may have it may have almost a matte finish look to it. I'm going to lay this down. Okay. So again, I'm going to be putting tape on the back side of the cassette. All right. Now the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to take off a small piece of tape. All right, now I'm going to run this across the tape. All right, I'm going to tap it down there. Okay, now we're going to take this other side and we're going to bring it in here. So this is the tricky part, folks. You've got to do your best to try to get these lined up as closely as possible and uh, as uh, even as possible. If you've done your job right, you should have an even splice. There we go. Now, once you've got that attached there, now what you need to do, if you've got that sharp pair of scissors here, you can either use the box knife here or you can use the scissors. Again, making sure that it is a nice sharp pair of scissors. We're going to trim the excess scotch tape away from the tape stock. All right, we're going to make another snip here, trying to get as closely as possible. And there we go. 
All right. We now have a completed splice. So now this is ready to get rewound and put back in the cassette housing. Put our tools aside here. All right. So there we go. We now have a single piece of tape. Now it's much easier to drop the spools into the back part of the cassette because this is where this is where your rollers and springs are. So now I need to flip this around. Now you need to do this one side at a time here. The right side is a little bit easier. You've got this uh, set of rollers here. You got one metal one, one plastic one. And you want to run your tape stock between those two rollers. I'm trying to be careful not to touch the tape here. All right, I'm going to drop that in there. Now there's that little tape break here in the center. Pull that towards you and the spool will drop down. Now we need to do the other side. This side is a little more tricky because you've got one roller and you've got this pin and this little uh, plastic like cellophane like flap. The tape has to run around this stationary roller and in between this pin and this little flap here. All right. So now going around the stationary roller between the pin and the flap. I'm trying to only touch the edge of the tape stock there. All right. Now you're going to pull that little brake again. Spool drops down. All right. Now, if you wind the spools opposite of each other, uh, counterclockwise on the left side, clockwise on the right side, you'll take up the rest of the slack there. And now we're ready to put the lid back on this thing and get it going. All right. If you've done everything correctly and you've got it all lined up, nothing popped out of place, you should be able to drop that back down on there. And now we can go ahead and take off this tape here that's holding the flap open. Okay. Remember, there's no screws in here yet, so you got to hold it together. And now we're ready to put the screws back in. All right, You've done your job correctly. You now have a reassembled spliced videotape. All right, now let's check it out and see how we did. All right, and very soon here you'll see uh, the point in which the splice was made. And there it is. It becomes a very strange transition between the two pieces of tape, but then once it picks up, it's, uh, well, it's somewhat back to normal. Again, uh, you can kind of tell we only lost a few seconds here. So, uh, again, this tape is very poor quality so there's only so much that can be done but uh, nonetheless a successful operation and now this tape is able to be played again all right folks that's going to do it we now have a completed repair videotape that i can continue capturing the footage off of uh, word of advice uh, if you have a tape that you've repaired uh, I would try avoiding running it at high speed, like high speed rewind or uh, search functions, anything like that. Anything that runs the tape at a high rate of speed, it could very well snap again. So you want to treat this as a fragile item, uh, at least up until the point where you've got your footage captured. Uh, so that is going to do it. Uh, I hope you found this video informative and uh, interesting. 
Uh, if you have not done so, please like and subscribe to No War Video Network on YouTube. That is No War Video Productions' exclusive YouTube channel. Uh, also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Once again, I'm Todd Hilton for No War Video Productions, and I want to thank you for watching.